G'day everyone and welcome back to the Aaron Engineering Channel. My name's Aaron. Uh, as promised, it's been a while since I've been out here in my little home machine shop. Uh, and I've got a little video for you today. So you may remember a couple of weeks ago I explained to you that I was working on this little CNC lathe conversion. Well, we're nearly there, okay? We've got the axes moving around. Uh, the last thing I'm up to now is bolting the spindle motor back in. But I need a way for the spindle motor to talk to the controller. And that's how we get the correct RPM. Uh, when we're running a CNC program, we might call up a dedicated RPM. We also want to synchronize the RPM of the spindle with the lead screw so we can do threading. So today I've, I need to machine up a new shaft. Now, the encoder in this little machine here was an old fashioned uh, resolver. And I th I'm not sure how it worked. It could have been like a taco or something like that, but it's not compatible with uh, 40 years later on, uh, more digital electronics such as the Masso system. So I have to change the encoder. Now the problem is, so the spindle motor on this machine is driven uh, obviously belt drive and then there's an internal belt further on along the shaft down to a little sub assembly and that sub assembly is where the encoder needs to go now the shaft on this one here was not suitable so it was inside a cartridge and this cartridge was recessed in so there was no way i could put an encoder on the end of this original shaft and also the other thing is too that it's it's actually a 12 mil shaft with an M12 or 1.75 thread. And this little tiny little teat on the end here is only three millimeters. So for me to do something with that, it's just gonna cause problems. So what I did, went over to the drawing board and uh, hand sketched myself up a little plan to remake an entire shaft.
So I had to be careful with that amount of stick out because I was getting some chatter. So as I got closer down to my final size, I took uh, lesser cuts, probably 10 thou cuts, and uh, till I hit that required size. Now it's a bearing surface, so that had to be pretty much 12 mil on the money. And the other end I kept up at about 19 millimeters. So after I machined out the profile what I wanted, I uh, changed the tool in the lathe, put the threading tool in, and uh, did an angular approach method and cut that thread uh, down to M12 by 1.75 pitch. Then it was uh, out of the lathe and up over to the mill, uh, where I could then uh, mill that little keyway in here. Now, I didn't have a wood rough key cutter. The original had a wood rough key in it. I put a feather key in a four mil feather key and uh, it, it went in there like a finger in a glove, so to speak. Uh Uh, on the opposite end of my shaft, I drilled and tapped. I kept a five and a half mil boss and drilled and tapped an M4 thread. And that would and that will allow the encoder that I'm making. So this is the encoder wheel. You'll see it's got a small hole in it here, which is roughly about five and a half. This was cut out on our laser at work. And of course, when you're cutting plastic with a laser, you're gonna get a little bit of discrepancy in your diameters. So I made the shaft to fit this wheel. Well, that's all I've got for you today, guys. I hope you found it interesting. I, uh, sorry I've been away for such a long time, but I finally made my way back out here and uh, to uh, take a little bit of footage for you guys at home. So look, look after yourself and uh, I'll see you on the next Aaron Engineering video. Bye-bye.